Hello to everyone, in this video we're gonna make a detailed video review on Suzuki Vstom 650. This is one of the most common bikes around the world. The reason I'm saying we're gonna make it because uh, we together, me and Martin, who is my cameraman at the moment, he's the owner of this motorcycle, we're gonna tell you everything about it. Stay with me. <laughs> All right, welcome back in the channel, guys. So I'm not gonna deep inside with all of the specs because these are the things you can find in the internet. Uh, what I believe is more important, our opinions, me and Martin's opinion about the bike, I will just point at the things. It, is, it has 19 inch front wheel, 17 on the back. It has um, a V-twin, uh, 650cc, I believe was something like 60, 64 horsepower or something like that. And this is actually the most powerful bike in, in this category because uh, all of the bikes with this segment, like 650, 700cc, are around uh, 50, maybe 55 horsepower. So this is about 10 extra horsepower. So the, the, the weight of the bike is around 200 kilograms, or a little bit more maybe. But actually, once you start riding, you can't feel it. The petrol tank is around 20 liters. Again, I'm not sure, and Martin is also not sure, so you can check it uh, by yourself uh, um, uh, how many liters exactly it has. And in, in, in overall, it's a, as I said, this is one of the most uh, used bikes around the world. I'm gonna just walk around and show you what I mean. Uh, so don't mind the, the top box. It belongs to my friend Martin. <laughs> he love it. <laughs> he love it. Yeah. So uh, maybe this is not the most prettier bike, or at least it is not my type of bike. But I have to confess a few things. It's a very very practical bike. Absolutely practical bike. And I really love this analog clocks and the digital in the middle. So while you ride, it's very very easy to to read everything. Uh, so. I don't want people who, who has this uh, digital instruments now to attack me because this is just my opinion. The digitals are good, but when you write, it's not that easy to read it. These big analog clocks are, are something really, really practical. The handlebar absolutely simple. So this bike is what year, M Martin? 2008. 2008. So this is already 11 years old bike. So this is actually a good chance for me to review old bikes because uh, usually People ask me, why you not review this bike or this model or that model? Because, guys, uh, where to find these bikes to review it? Usually I review new bikes because I can take it from the shop, but old bikes is a different store. So every time when I have a chance to see and ride some of these old bikes, I do it with pleasure, just to let you know. Okay, let me continue. So the, the, the instruments here, everything is absolutely simple. Uh, handlebar, uh, as I said already, the clocks, the standard buttons, absolutely no extra. Simple, simple bike. Or as uh, uh, Martin said, keep it kiss, huh? Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Yes, yeah, simple, stupid. All right, let me start the engine now. I made it from the first time. It has a special here yeah, system. Uh, yeah. I have. I don't have. I don't have enough enough uh, hands. Okay. Typical old-fashioned sound. Standard suspension, not so hard. It has an option to preload it on the back, the shock. I don't think that we can make something with front. Oh, we have some options, but actually you don't need to because this is road oriented bike. So, so far, so good. Another one shot from the back to see what it is. All right, well, let's go to ride it and then I will continue. All right, guys. So the first impressions from these bikes are that uh, it is very well balanced bike so the the weight distribution is it's really really good so being a old-fashioned guy i always prefer to have a tank on the top like this uh, this storm even that maybe the uh, from the scientific point of view the tank under the seat is much better like the honda nc in front of uh, me the, the one i was riding until now but as i said i prefer to have the standard uh, petrol tank because for me, it's uh, distribute the weight much better. 
So the first impressions are that the bike is very stable, very easy to ride. You don't need any special skills, even that it's a heavy bike. I think it's over 200 kilograms or around 200 kilograms. But uh, you cannot really feel it when you start when you start riding. So that's why I, I perfectly understand that this is a preferable choice for many riders, especially many riders around the world who went with, with these bikes. The engine is some kind of uh, bulletproof and, and, and more and more. But now I'm going to focus uh, just on the right. So guys, I got the bike, as I said, just a few minutes ago. We, we switched it with um, Martin. And I already got the impression that this is it's been my bike forever so it's so easy to get used to you don't need a special skills or time to adjust yourself to this bike it is just take and go bike and i look forward to see it how it's handled the corners and to, to feel the brakes and and so on and so on but so far the impressions are very good when i told you about the weight distribution and the balance but the balance of the bike I mean everything, it is so easy to ride it in, in, in slow speed, like now in the traffic, just to do maneuvers and to handle it without need to, to worry about the weight of the bike because it's, it's split it really well. This is another one of the, uh, of the pros of this, of this model and the riding position is very comfortable for me, even that I'm, I'm a tall guy, uh, 185, a little above 6 feet. But yeah, visibility of the dashboard is very good. I have used the standard uh, control panels, speed on the left hand side and the RPMs on the right hand side, clock in the middle, petrol gauge, temperature, which is very, very useful. So, hmm, very good. The handlebar position is, is okay for me. Uh, the windscreen. What Martin uh, told me that it's going to be probably not high enough for me But this is not a problem. It could be replaced at any time. So it shouldn't be a problem at all uh, Let's get out of this traffic and I'll tell you a little bit more about handling around the corners All right, so now I'm out of the traffic and I, I can twist a little bit more and I can feel the power immediately so as I said, this is maybe the most powerful bike in this category, even though it's an old model, you feel the power. And uh, I can see now that the wind protection is not so good for me, but it's because of my size and it could be uh, made properly by choosing the right windscreen. But so far, um, I've got only positive uh, feelings. we're coming to the first corner sections good let me feel it very well first impressions are excellent Absolutely pleasure to ride. Uh, it's handled the corners really, really good. In many ways, I will say, with the risk to upset some NC owners, but <laughs> I will say that uh, I prefer to ride this bike instead of NC. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just gives me the the confidence and the feeling, the feelings I need. It's just more stable. So feel it like a more stable bike I don't know maybe it's just just me I don't know
I like how the, the throttle responds and uh, how the brake responds and they do exactly what I want them to do. I don't know about ABS, I have to check later if it has or not, but just uh, I prefer to have my own manual control instead of all of the system to control myself or my decisions. As I said, they could be very, very useful, but they could be also, uh, they can make me uh, not so good favor. If you learn to use it only with the systems, then it's a problem when you don't have it. So uh, when, when I need to tilt, I prefer to be on this bike. Even that the, the center of gravity is maybe higher because of the tank, I prefer to be on this bike. Very, very good. I love it. Let me test the brakes. I think that the brakes are good enough to provide the stopping power you need. Maybe they are not excellent, but good enough. Let me test it again. Yeah. They are good. Ah, I feel it so well on the corner, so well. Man. Ah, as I said many times, I respect the laws of physics, but the, at the end, it's all coming to our feelings and, and our experience with the bikes. So maybe the law of uh, physics say that uh, a lower petrol tank is better, but at the end, the device behind the handlebar or me, it's who is going to judge or who is going to stay alive or die, whatever, or have fun or negativism, whatever you want to name it. So, from the riding point of view, this bike is just brilliant. Another one very good point I want to mention is the existing of these uh, analog clocks. I mean the speed and uh, the RPMs. Yeah, I'm sure, and uh, I know that when you have a digital um, clocks, you can have much more information and um, you can change, change the different modes and you can have everything you need. But Man, I really like this old-fashioned, I really like these analog clocks. They're so easy to, to read while you write. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the digitals in, in some models, they've got these small letters and numbers and you really need to focus on, on it to know what exactly they show. Alright, maybe if you have the bike from a, from a long time, you will know what exactly it is, but just, just give me that, the confidence I need when I right and everything I need when I write actually well now these sharp corners I just have such a just a nice feeling with this bike man love it I really hope that we're gonna have a, a stretch line which is <laughs> almost impossible here just to twist a little bit more I want to check what is the the normal cruising speed of that bike but I'm I'm pretty sure that we're not gonna have this chance but anyway uh, the purpose of this test is to, uh, to fill the bike in uh, one of the riding conditions you might uh, need to experience like twisty roads which is very very important all right you see how stable it is you don't need to grab the handlebar you just tilt and it's go whatever you want it is such a simple bike And I really enjoy this bike, guys, absolutely. And it behaves such a well and natural on, on, on every riding conditions. So I cannot tell you anything about how this bike is going to perform off-road or dirt roads or bad roads. But on beautiful roads, twisty roads like this, it's just brilliant. So as I said, guys, I don't care what the scientists will say or what the magazines will say or what many people will say about this bike and all of the stats and numbers and analytics they're gonna show me i know what i feel 
and this is a wonderful bike to ride wonderful maybe it's not uh, the bike I'm gonna choose to go around the world because uh, you know my trips I always include some bad roads or off-roading whatever so it's not a proper bike for this but for anything else it is it is Alright guys, so I ride it now at the moment with 90 km per hour, 4000 RPMs, absolutely well for highways, I believe that it's not going to be a problem to ride it with 120-30 km per hour even, and uh, it has 12000 RPMs, so it shouldn't be a problem to ride it even with 140, I believe, so my conclusions are that the bike is perfect for any kind of road conditions. All right, I told you what I think about the bike, but I believe that the best person who can share his experience with it, it's Martin, because he has it uh, from the beginning and he has a lot of miles on it and his opinion is worth much more than mine. So Martin, please come here and talk. Well, thanks for that, Pavlin. Um, the reason why I bought this bike is uh, I more, do more or less about 50,000 kilometers a year. I need something that's robust, reliable, uh, offers good fuel consumption because we don't like pulling into the petrol station to fill up every other day. So I rode one of these a few years ago, really liked it and decided now's the time to get one for myself. Uh, having spent uh, a few months with it now, um, it's, uh, I find it very comfortable to ride all day long. Even though I've got uh, a little bit of padding here, that's, uh, that's just to help along the way. But normally the seat in itself is very comfortable. Um, it's a nice position to ride um, and not reaching too far for the handlebars because I'm a little bit short as well so sometimes some of the bikes that I've got I need to reach this one is great and uh, no, very comfortable can you sit on the bike just to of course you can yeah and how high are you I'm five foot eight uh, and I can get both feet comfortably on the ground yeah so yeah, and I'm not reaching forward with me with my arms. So yeah, I'm very comfortable on it all day long, which is very important if you're going to be doing uh, quite a bit of touring. Yeah. Um, I mentioned about not putting too much fuel in it. It's very frugal. Um, cost me. I'm running around all day, maybe doing 250 kilometres a day, and it's costing me seven euros to keep it going. Um, may, other maintenance-wise, it's only a two-cylinder, so you've only got two sets of part, spark plugs. Yeah. Uh, these these sort of things add up when you uh, when you've got a fleet of bikes. You need to keep try and keep your costs down. And um, like I said before, I'm looking for reliability because it is my job. I need it to be on the road every day with fit, covering fifty thousand kilometres. If I uh, if, if the, there's something wrong with it, uh, then it costs me money. Okay, going back to ride riding uh, the bike, uh, brakes brakes are very important. You've got to be able to stop yourself. Uh, especially in an emergency. I find the brakes are very smooth. Uh, I get good feedback from them when I start applying them. Um, the, uh, it's a non-ABS bike, so uh, you, you don't want to be grabbing the front brake on this, otherwise you know, you've know got to be off your bike. Uh, but uh, smoothly and progressively, I get a good feel for them, and I can bring the bike up to a halt pretty, pretty rapidly. They are very good. Power on the bike, well, there's more than enough power. There's 64 brake horsepower. It can excel at overtaking other vehicles smoothly and progressively and um, carrying passengers as well uh, i've been uh, carrying passengers quite a lot recently and more than enough power to uh, again for overtaking but the beauty that i like about this bike is it's so agile in the bends uh, in the twisties of gran canaria and um, very well balanced Yes, speed-wise as well, uh, top speed, it cruises quite nicely along the highway, 140, 150 kilometres. Um, after that, I do get a little bit of wind buffeting from, from the screen and the fairing, but other than that, uh, no, it goes along really nicely. Moving on to uh, feedback off the, uh, off the handlebars, you do get a little bit of vibration in your, in your hands and your feet, but don't forget this is a, an older bike, 2008, uh, and it's a, uh, a V-twin, so it is quite lively and it is a little bit vibey, but nothing that's going to make your hand tingle at the end of the day. How is the windscreen? The windscreen, uh, well, I'm a little bit short, so when I do pit start picking up speed, certainly on the uh, on the motorways and the autopista, uh, I do get a little bit of buffeting 
on my forehead there, forehead there. What I've done is I've ordered a new screen for it that's going to be a touring screen, it's going to be a little bit higher, so that should send everything over my head. Okay, my final thoughts on this bike is, uh, these bikes are very underestimated by other people, certainly the people that have never ridden them, and they tend to look elsewhere rather than looking at a V-Strom, but since I've had it, I find it's absolutely fantastic bike and two up. Would I go across the continents in it? Two up? Of course I would. There's more than enough power and it's comfortable and it's an ideal all-rounder. All right, guys. So I can really confirm his words. I also never had a proper chance to ride this bike like I did it today. And I was nicely surprised to confirm everything uh, Martin just said. So yes, it's probably the most underestimated bike, but it's really worth to go and, and give it a try, yeah? Yeah, and cost-wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. these older bikes with low mileage, they don't cost a lot of money. I mean, I picked this up for 3,000 euros. So with, if, for example, yeah. it's your first bike, your first bike is going to be a mistake anyway. Yeah. So better is to make a cheap mistake. <laughs> a cheap yeah? mistake, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, guys, that's about everything from us. I hope this information will be useful for someone. If you have any question about this bike, maybe the best person to ask is Martin because he has uh, tons of knowledge about it. I will leave down in the description his details, also the details about his motorcycle tours company around the um, Canary Island. Uh, well, the tailored video about it, what we have done, what we have covered here, you can see in my way, uh, YouTube channel, description also in the link down below. Uh, I will say nothing now at that moment because this is a video review about the bike. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Ciao.